So what is your favorite version of 2112? Rush fans from the beginning of time have loved 2112. Many consider that to be their breakout record, their breakout song. Maybe the Rush's first record, Rush, was a breakout record in and of itself. But really 2112 is the record that jettisoned the fame of the band and the freedom that they were looking for to express themselves musically. And it's not the first sidelong song that goes to the Fountain of Labneth on the previous record, Caress of Steel, but 2112 is really the sidelong song or the record that really put Rush on the map. Now, that came out in 1976, uh, so it was, uh, you know, eons ago. So there have been many versions of that song played by the band live over the years, and there have been very few tours that have not included some parts of 2112. And there are many great live performances of that song. Now, as Rush fans know, and for those who don't, I'll just uh, let you know that 2112 is a seven-part suite. It starts with Overture, then The Temples of Syrinx, Discovery, Presentation, Oracle the Dream, Soliloquy, and The Grand Finale. Now, because of recording constraints back in the day, Rush didn't play the whole suite live from the beginning. And from that time forward in 1976, they would omit certain parts of the song. Usually they would leave out Discovery and they would leave out Oracle the Dream. They would actually play the last little part of Discovery just to set up the next song, which was Presentation. But then somewhat of a miracle happened. For the Test for Echo tour, Rush decided to play the entire 2112 Suite 1 to 7. Now, admittedly, the key was toned down so that Giddy Lee could sing more easily but it was still great to see that the whole suite was played. And that was actually the only tour that the whole 2112 suite was played. But since so many versions of that song have been played live over the years, which version was the best? And that's really hard to do because, you know, some tours they would play some parts of 2112, other, other tours they'd play maybe a couple more songs, maybe a couple less. So it's really hard to compare which was the best version of 2112 over the years. So I decided to cull the history of Rush's live performances and I came to a conclusion that there is no best version of 2112 right from beginning to end. But over the years, certain parts of the song were played exceptionally well. So what I've decided to do in this video is cull those pieces together, put them together and present to you for each song in the suite what tour had the best version. And I'm going to provide a link to each one of those down in the description below but i'm going to go through each one one by one let you know which one i think is the best version of each song and maybe later on you can make a little playlist for yourself and put it all together and just hear how it would sound uh, based on what my recommended best versions of these songs are from 2112. so here we go for overture it's the first part of the suite it's part one so why not start way at the beginning so in 1976 when rush debuted 2112 on tour I think that it would be great, uh, a great place to start, and it's actually a really great version, the one I'm thinking of. So it is the Capitol Theater version from 1976. I'll include the link below. And it's actually what they decided to play as part of their version of 2112 for that tour. So even though the link is their 2112 performance, the overture, the beginning, is actually what I'm focusing on this time. So that version of overture is one of their best versions of the song in their entire live history. So that's the one I'm, that's the link I'm including below for Overture. For part two, The Temples of Syrinx. Ah, uh, it can only be one version um, from the Grace Under Pressure Tour. In the Grace Under Pressure Tour, where we have the live uh, DVD and we have the audio from the Replay X3 compilation, The Temples of Syrinx is played in a medley. The medley is YYZ, The Temples of Syrinx, and it finishes off with Tom Sawyer. And I gotta tell you, that is of all the versions of Temples of Syrinx that I've heard throughout the years, that is the best version of that song. And actually for the Grace Under Pressure Tour 1984, I think Rush had reached a plateau of sorts as far as their musicality and their physicalness and their ability just to play like machine gun perfect live. I mean, they were really just spot on, especially for that whole concert. I mean, they were, you know, they were young enough 
and energetic enough to just play with such precision every song in that DVD. You got to check it out if you haven't seen the whole thing. But the Temples of Syrinx that they played in that medley is absolutely a killer track. And it's pretty fast, too. Um, they ex It's accelerated a little bit, but they're just nailing it from beginning to end. It's just a spectacular display of musicianship, as always. But that version of the Temples of Syrinx is the best one of all the ones I've seen. Part three, Discovery. Discovery is interesting because that's something that they've left out typically over the years. It's basically the the hero of the story discovering the guitar, hence the name Discovery. And in the original, he's messing around with the instrument. He's like plucking away at the strings and then he eventually learns how to play it. I think something that needs to be done, someone needs to come up with how is it that he learned how to play? Because obviously there's, there's standard tunings, there's, there's different tunings of the strings and you know chord shapes and progressions and all this sort all this sort of theory that comes with learning the guitar how did this guy how did this guy learn how to play the guitar someone needs to come up with that some logical explanation maybe because it was an advanced society as far as technology goes uh, maybe he had computers maybe there were ways to maybe there was other things that this guy discovered in addition to the guitar that was with the instrument maybe some sort of media uh, that would kind of explain how to play the instrument. Or maybe he could have just figured it out because maybe he was that smart. But I think it would be interesting if someone would come up with that. In any case, the version I'm thinking of is the version that Alex Lifeson played during the Test for Echo tour. That was kind of like the surprise where they ended up playing the entire suite. Now, in looking things up, I did discover that they did do a version of Discover during the Hemispheres tour as well. But the link I'm going to include in the description is from the Test for Echo tour. It's a beautiful rendition of Discovery anyway. So that's Discovery, third song, the best version I've found from the Test for Echo tour. Presentation, part four. So the, that song has been played pretty much really great every, every time they've played it live, which hasn't been that often actually. But the version I'm going to recommend is the version that they played in R40, which when I saw that, it was kind of... A pleasant surprise that they played presentation during their last tour and the link I'm gonna include is from the show they played in Philadelphia in June of 2015 and you know the camera work is not official camera work and the sound isn't perfect but it's definitely good enough to appreciate the guys playing presentation and something that we thought that they wouldn't do at least I didn't think they would do it and it was a nice surprise you can see that Getty Lee is straining a little bit because he's still hitting those notes pretty high but it was just nice to see them play that song so my recommendation for presentation is the one that they played during the R40 tour the link is below part five Oracle the dream this is a song that was never played live until the test for echo tour in 1997 so again them playing the entire suite really nice surprise and it was just nice to hear there's no other tour that they played that in so that link will be in the description below so yeah not much to say about that one part six soliloquy i looked around for different versions of this song and i found a version of it from the hemispheres tour that i'm going to recommend it is brilliant the way they played that ver the, the way they played soliloquy on that tour they really stretch it out the vocals are really stretched out the guitar solo that alex plays is so soulful and you can really feel the hero's strain and pain with everything that was going on in his life at the moment just the instrumentation is stepped up a notch for that tour so i think you'll really enjoy that version from the hemispheres tour for soliloquy and the link that i'm going to provide is not a video it's actually audio but you don't need the video because the audio just puts you there in the concert. It's pretty spectacular. And I'm hoping that as time goes by, some video from the Hemispheres tour gets unearthed because I think it is the dream of every Rush fan to have been at a show during the Hemispheres tour. And I'm pretty sure the majority of Rush fans didn't go to that tour. But you fans are out there, so if you were at the Hemispheres tour and you remember any if you remember this song from that tour, post your comments below because we'd like to hear what your experience was if you remember them playing Soliloquy because this is, a this is a fantastic killer track. Part seven, grand finale. 
This to me was very easy to pick. The best version of this song is from the Exit Stage Left medley that they played on Exit Stage Left, the Moving Pictures Tour. And for that medley, you had Bytor and the Snow Dog, then it was In the End, In the Mood, and then 2112 Grand Finale. And I've mentioned to many people that to me, that medley, that 10 minutes of music right there, is probably the best 10 minutes of rock ever. I mean, it's just, those guys were so on top of their game during that tour. And this is probably the medley that they finished the show with before they came back on stage and did their encore. But the grand finale from that medley is the best version of grand finale that I've ever heard. I've not heard anything better before or after. It's just so impactful. The sound was so loud, but you know, you can hear everything so clear from each of the band members. Just the tone of that concert, at least from that recording, you know, I think I probably have a little bias because that's kind of the time I started to like Rush. That's when I discovered them during the moving pictures tour when I was a kid. But, you know, to this day, I've been comparing the concert recordings and the Exit Stage Left concert is pretty much the, I'd say the de facto standard for me as far as concert sound. Because the focus was so much on the musicians and you know you can hear the crowd here and there but the recording the dvd the video of that concert is just almost exclusively on the musicians you very rarely see the crowd you know the flip of that is the russian rio dvd where the crowd is very prevalent in the in the video i mean they're cutting to them all the time and rightly so because there was never a crowd that we've ever seen react to rush that way but the Exit Stage Left concert, its sound, the emphasis on the musicians, and Grand Finale was such a highlight. And it just showed, each one is showcasing their musicianship in that song. So the best version of Grand Finale is from Exit Stage Left. Link is in the description. And that's it. That's my take on the best versions of each of the songs in 2112. I just wanted to throw that out there. It was kind of fun to kind of look for these recordings just to see which I thought were the best ones and present them to you. If you know of other versions of each of those songs that you think are better or that you were present, maybe one of the older concerts from maybe even the 70s or early 80s that you were present, that you saw them perform, leave your description, your experience below in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, if you want to get more content from me relating to our favorite band, Rush, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time I put out something new. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.